Hello, high level listeners. How should you talk to your coworkers in an American office? Do your English speaking colleagues like making small talk? What should you call your coworkers if you work in the United States or the, Uni- or the UK? Hi, everyone. I'm Kat Teacher, the American voice here on High Level Listening. And together with Mark from the UK, we're going to have an English chat all about American and British relationships with your colleagues and your coworkers. Yes, that's right. We're going to answer all of Kat's questions and more in a casual, advanced level English conversation here on High Level Listening. We think this chat will shed some light on some very important cultural points, especially if you want to work with or you already work with American or British people. Absolutely. So let's jump in and start talking about colleagues and coworkers in the United States and in the UK. Now, let's start with our first question. Is there a difference between the word coworkers and colleagues? I think if you open a dictionary or look up synonyms, you'll see colleagues and coworkers have the same meaning, more or less. But I think in the UK, from my experience, we only use the word colleagues. Colleagues is the word, the most common word for someone you work with in the UK. I know coworkers, I know what it is, I know what it means. And when I was a teacher in Korea, that seemed to be the word that they used over there. Everyone said coworker, so I said coworker. I just blended in. But if I was in the UK and I worked in an office, yeah, the people I work with are my colleagues. That's the professional way to describe them. Uh, Is that the same in the US? We definitely use both in the United States, coworkers and colleagues. And like you said, they both have a very similar meaning. But I would say that your coworkers, especially if you work with a group of people in an office, in a restaurant, in sales, in, in a store, if you work in a group of people, those are your coworkers. Now, when do we use the word colleagues? I feel this is a little bit more professional, but especially with, uh, you know, jobs where you're working on your own, like a professor or a lawyer or a professional where you have a friend, what would you call them if they work with another company? I would call them a colleague. So other professors are my colleagues. We are on the same level, but we're not exactly working for the same company. We're sort of working on our own independently. So these are my colleagues. So that is probably the biggest difference. When you're working in a group of people, your coworkers, and when you're working independently with other people that are similar to you, these are your colleagues. So we definitely mm-hmm. use both coworkers and colleagues. And I think it's more of the casual working together and working independently with other people. Mm. Yeah, okay. I guess that's true in the UK. Uh, if mm. I know someone who has the same role as me, so mm. I'm a teacher and then they work in another school and they're a teacher, we are colleagues because we both perform the same role. So yeah, two lawyers would be colleagues, like you said, mm-hmm. two professors at different universities are still colleagues. It sounds like they could go to each other for advice or for help. Yes because you are a colleague, we're in the same industry and we have the same role. There is another word for that you could use in the UK. If I'm a teacher and I know another teacher, but in a different school, they are a fellow teacher. Mm -hmm. Uh, If I work in a restaurant and I'm a waiter and I know another waiter who works in a different restaurant, they're a fellow waiter as well, a fellow barman, a fellow teacher, fellow lawyer. So if you want to describe someone who does the same role as you, you can call them a fellow and then that job role. So Well, and and we do that in the United States as well. So if I'm a server at a restaurant, I work with other fellow servers, but they are also my coworkers. And then say someone who works in the kitchen is also a coworker because we work together, right? Coworker work together, right? So, but also to share that we are in the same job role. Yes, we use that as well. Fellow server, fellow salesperson, fellow teacher. I think of like a president saying like, my fellow Americans, like we're all together. We're all the same. My fellow countrymen. Yeah, it's like you're on a team. You're all the same. So it's a word that kind of bonds you together. So another question, Uh, when you're talking to your colleagues in the United States, Do you ever use the words ma'am or mom? 
sir, Mr. or Mrs. when you're talking to your colleagues? You know, it's it's kind of funny. I didn't realize that people do call each other Mr. or Mrs. or ma'am or sir. I mean, when you grow up in school, you use these. However, when you start your first job, I thought I should call my boss Mr. or I should call the people who were much older than me ma'am or sir or miss or missus. But it was actually way more casual when I got to an office job than I thought before. So, you know, when I'm new, freshly out of college, I'm getting my first office job and all of my bosses and all of my coworkers and colleagues are introducing themselves with their first name. And they're saying, yeah, you can call me Kate. You can call me Bob. You can call me um, James. And I'm thinking, really? You don't want me to call you Mr. Robertson? Just call me James. Oh, okay. So offices in the United States, of course, there are going to be some that are a bit more formal. But even in some of my, my friends, they work for really big global companies. They're still calling their boss by their first name. So some people, of course, want you to call them that. I remember there was this little old lady uh, who loved to be called Mrs. James. That was her last name, Mrs. James. And she preferred that people called her Mrs. James. So she said, hi, my name is uh, Rebecca James. You can call me Mrs. James. And I said, yes, of course, because 100 percent I will respect if you say you can call me, I will call you that. That is why we use that phrase. You can call me Cat. You can call me Mark. OK, thanks, Cat. Thanks, Mark. You can call me Mrs. James. Thanks, Mrs. James. I will respect whatever it is that you tell me. But it's it's whatever the person wants. I would say most of the time we just go by our first name and I don't usually say yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. I think it makes people feel a little old sometimes in the workplace. So we just skip it. We just say, sure, Bob. Yes, Mrs. James, whatever you need. So what about you? Do you use these words, ma'am, sir, mister, manager, um, employee, things like that mm. when referring to your colleagues or your coworkers? Uh, no, we don't either. It's the same as the US. It is extremely casual and you talk to your colleagues on a first name basis. So if you joined my team and we worked together and I was your colleague, I would say to you, Hi, I'm Mark. That's it. I won't even tell you my surname or my last name. Oh. We don't even share that sometimes. Like, hi, I'm Mark. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the team. Even if I was your boss as well and you were my subordinate, I would say, hi, I'm Mark. Welcome to the team. So it's very casual. You only use your first name. So again, most people introduce themselves and they tell you how they would like to be addressed. You can call me Mark. I go by Mark. Uh, I don't think I've met or worked with a person who wanted to be Mr. Someone. Mm. Oh, that's a lie. Uh, sorry. I worked for two different bosses in Korea. The first boss, he wanted to be called Mr. Im. So I called him Mr. Im. But then my second boss just wanted to be called Director. So your boss will probably tell you how uh, they would like to be addressed, and then you just follow that. But so I don't think casual. in the US or the UK, someone would ask you to call them director. No, that is obviously, that's a translation, I should say, <laughs> to, yes. from Korean to English. And, but yeah, so but it's of even course, weirdness. again, if someone wants to be called that, we just go with it. We just go with that. <laughs> yes. If you want me to call you that, I will call you that. So what about you? We'd love to hear more about your culture, because this might explain why Americans and Brits feel maybe a little too casual in the office. Let us know where you're from and what you normally do when you talk to your coworkers and your colleagues. Do you go by your first name? Would it be more appropriate to say Mr. James or Mrs. James instead of saying, hi, my name is Robert. You can call me Robert. Let us know because we'd love to hear you and your culture as well. Now, I quite like this question, and I get this question a lot from some of our students. 
Mark, are you expected to socialize or spend time with your colleagues after work? Something that's just not work related. It doesn't have anything to do with work, but maybe going to a work dinner or going out for drinks with your colleagues? Basically, no, you are not obliged to socialize or spend time with your colleagues after work. So that's typically after 5 p.m. or after 6 p.m. When you finish your work, you're done. You can go home. You don't have to hang out. Uh, you don't have to go to a restaurant or go to a bar. Um, there's, I've never had an experience in an English office where the boss at the end of the day said, hey, guys, we're going to a restaurant after work tonight. You should come. I've never been invited to a dinner uh, by my boss just after work or never on a Friday or a Monday or any day. Um, it just doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. We respect that when your time working is finished, you are free. You can go home to your family. You can go home to your friends outside of work. Your time is completely free. There's no obligation. There's no expectation for you to hang around and make friends with your colleagues or go out drinking. We don't have that kind of culture at all. Mm. The only exception, I would say, we do one party once a year and it's the Christmas party, mm. the mm -hmm. office Christmas party. This is quite a big event sometimes and it's really the only one of the year. We don't do anything for New Year's either. It's just Christmas and maybe the company will rent a venue uh, and all the colleagues are invited. There's a little bit of social pressure to go. You probably mm. should go, even if it's just for an hour. There will be food and drinks, maybe a DJ or some music. And yeah, you just hang out with your colleagues, chat, eat some food, and then you can go home. But again, it's quite a low pressure thing that only okay. happens once a year. That's the only example we have outside of work. I'm sure that, that a lot of thing? people, yeah. I'm sure that a lot of people are looking forward to that party as well. So they really want to go. But do you think, like you said, there's a little bit of social pressure. Do you think if you didn't go, people would be hurt or kind of upset that you didn't go? Probably not upset or not offended. Mm -hmm. um, but the next time you go to work in, on, in early January, someone will say, oh, I didn't see you at the Christmas party. Oh, okay. Someone will mention it. Someone will bring it up. Worked someone will little, know that you Just a there. couple of minutes that, you know. Well, you weren't there. <laughs> I noticed oh, that you weren't there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Exactly. You'll get that for sure. So sometimes people just suck it up and just go. Um, but some people dread it. Some people really, ugh, mm. it's the office. But they still go. But they, still, they still go. still go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course mm -hmm. they go. Yes. yes. So you'll hear a lot of people complaining about their weird office party or something weird happened. The boss drank too much. It's a great source of gossip uh, over the for festive the year. period. For the year to come. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Reputations can be destroyed <laughs> in one night. <laughs> sure. So what about the US? Are you expected to socialize with your colleagues? So I would definitely say there is an element of, you know, happy hour, uh, kind of the work oh. happy hour. This is more of a networking event. And I think that if some people, especially young people, really want to climb the ladder, Going to those social events that are hosted by your company, usually, or hosted by the industry, maybe if you work in oil and gas and the industry has a happy hour, I think networking is really a part of that. Is it expected of you? No. But Americans sometimes like to overdo things and we really want to get ahead of the game and we can be very competitive. So Going to these social events and networks and happy hours would be a great way to chat with your upper level bosses, meet people who maybe you only see in emails. Maybe you see their full name in emails copied on an email, but you actually would never meet them at work because you don't work in the same building, something like that. I think there is a little bit of pressure to do something like that, but only if you really want to climb the ladder and get ahead in your company. Now, outside of that, this is really for big companies. Outside of that, I would feel so strange if my boss or someone asked me to stay after work to do some sort of social event. 
I would feel really like that's not okay to ask me to do that. Yeah, same. Um, yeah, I I would be. Why are you asking? I would almost feel like they are taking advantage of the fact that they are my boss. And mm, yeah. if it's not work related, which I know the lines are blurred a little bit. Do I check my phone at 6 p.m. and answer an email? Or is it after work and I put my phone down? Work related boundaries are getting a little bit those lines are blurred. But if it's just, uh, oh, we're going to go out for dinner later. What? Like tonight? Like we're going to go. This week? Now? What, we're just going oh. to go out to dinner? Is it. With you? With the client? <laughs> yeah. Is it with, the, you know? Mm. Absolutely not. No, that would never happen. And if it did happen, I would feel very uncomfortable about it. So. Of course, there are work-related dinners, you know, going out with a client, but that's planned well in advance. This is not, and there's no social obligation. There's no work obligation. You do not have to say yes to something outside of work like that. So I, yes, when we've worked in different countries as teachers and we get invited to these social events, when I said no the very first time, very politely, I felt like that was the wrong answer. So <laughs> after that, I felt obligated to go but not every country does that so we'd love to hear from our students do you have these social obligations after work where do you work and what kind of social obligations are these uh, do you go out to dinner do you go out for drinks do you do something on the weekend how often do you do these things is it once a month maybe once a quarter just to get together with the, you know your group members let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear your experience. I remember maybe my first week in my Korean school, the first Korean school, my boss walked in an hour before the end and he like put his hand on my shoulder and he was like, tonight, drinking test. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then we went to a bar and yeah, I, I felt pressure to go. Everyone else went, all the other teachers went. We all went to a restaurant or a, or a bar. And yeah, it went on until three or 4 a.m. And this was like Thursday. This was not like a special occasion. It was no one's birthday. We didn't have the day off the next morning. Uh, and then I quickly learned that that was part of Korean culture. So that was a mm. culture shock for me, big time. <laughs> and, you know, I do feel like sometimes we might celebrate a birthday or we might celebrate uh, someone's retirement. But all of that happens within the work hours. So yeah. that's a little bit that's a little bit different as well. So if you work in an American office, should you make small talk with your American colleagues or is small talk a waste of time and annoying for them? I would definitely say 100 percent at least make an effort to add a single line or two of small talk in the U.S. and especially in the south of the United States. Sometimes business isn't really done until the small talk is finished. Small talk, for me, to put it in a simple way, is the way that you get to know somebody before you get to business. It's also just considered polite, and oftentimes it's considered quite friendly and easygoing. You're not just serious about work. You're not just trying to get through work. You're not just trying to sell something. You have to kind of warm up a little bit. So we often use small talk to just warm up, be, be a little friendly, get to know the person a little bit, and then we can go back to work. A lot of people think that small talk is something that's really boring and goes on for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, when in reality, small talk is just that. It's just a line or two. And it's just usually an introduction or an icebreaker. And then after that, we get to the real conversation, which is usually work related, something about work. So should you make small talk? Absolutely. But it shouldn't be this long winded conversation. It should be short and sweet. It should be very friendly. Then you can get on with the real conversation. And it doesn't actually have to feel like a waste of time because you are building that relationship. You are building that rapport and people expect it for sure. Americans, Brits, we expect a little bit because if you just go right into business and then you leave, people might think that you're a bit 
uh, uptight or maybe a bit cold and it's a little bit shocking. Uh, oh, oh, uh, yeah, here's, okay, you're gone. All right. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'd be the same in a British office. If mm -hmm. you arrived at work or if my colleague arrived at work, sat down, put on headphones and just started typing on their computer, like, whoa, it's like, is he okay? Is he in a bad mood? Uh, did he have a fight or an argument? Did he fall out with someone? Like, I would be the quite gossip surprised. Starts. They, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just creates more gossip. Um, so yeah, if you, especially in the morning when you arrive at work, you're expected to make a little bit of small talk with each of your colleagues. Like, oh, how are you? Um, yeah, what did you do last night? Anything interesting? Again, like Kat said, a short conversation, just one or two questions, and then go back to your desk. You also make small talk if you're in the break room and one of you is making a cup of tea or one of you is warming up something in the microwave, then yeah, that's time for a little bit of small talk there. It would be kind of awkward if you were just there in silence. We hate so an awkward silence. <laughs> yeah, right. That's what we're trying to do. Just fill the silence with something, make a bit of small talk. And yeah, if you start the conversation and make the small talk first, you come across as quite friendly. Like mm -hmm. you're not just workmates maybe you want to be sort of more friendly and just build your relationship build your trust get to know each other and maybe that makes working together a bit easier as well now i want to ask some of our students where are you from and do you make small talk is it common to you know have a little small talk where you're from or is this a completely new idea especially as you've been learning english for years and years so now, most of my students ask me, well, what am I supposed to talk about? So what kind of topics are appropriate for small talk in the office? And also, what topics shouldn't you talk about, especially in, at work in the office? I would say you should talk about very casual, impersonal, so not mm -hmm. personal topics. So casual things that uh, will not make anyone angry, will not start any arguments, and will not cause any disagreements. So <laughs> the lightest topics possible. That's so, a good way to explain it. Yeah. <laughs> right. So the weather, especially in the UK, someone can always say something about the weather, whether it's too hot, it's too cloudy, it's too cold. It's often the first thing people mention. If it's winter and you come in the office, you would come in and say, oh, oh it's chilly outside, isn't it? Uh, so weather is a number one, probably the number one small talk topic in the UK. Uh, if it's Monday morning, you probably talk about what you did on Saturday and Sunday during your time off. Uh, this is also true if there was a three-day weekend, a national holiday or a bank holiday in the UK. If you had a day off or any time off, you would come in and talk about what you did. Maybe you had a barbecue, maybe you went to another country and share your experience again. Quickly, don't describe every detail and every day. This is small talk. But uh, yeah, you can share those kinds of things and that would be appropriate for small talk. Uh, are those the same kind of topics in the US as well? Definitely. I think um, one thing that I kind of noticed that maybe, maybe it's just because I don't have my own kids and maybe that's why. But when people talk about their family, in the, in the United States, we, we do set a little bit more of a boundary there. Of course, there will be some small companies where they know everything about their kids and their husbands and their wives, um, and that's completely fine. It's up to you the amount that you want to share. I was going to mention when Mark mentioned, you know, your weekend, you don't have to really say anything. Oh, not much. Didn't get up to much. But you do need to participate in the conversation. Ask the other person what they did. If you don't want to talk about your barbecue that you had a lot of fun at, just say, didn't get up to much. Uh, what did you get up to? Bounce the question just back to back. the other person and just enjoy that you were polite and friendly and move on. I think Americans do this a lot. I think there is a bit for a lot of people. We do feel that boundary between that's why they are coworkers and not friends between coworkers, colleagues and our outside of work life. So inner work life and outside of work do feel like we do have a more strict boundary. Um, we still make the small talk. We still are polite. 
but we don't overshare. We don't overshare. And people who do overshare, I try to stop them. Oh, you know, I've got a meeting to jump into. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to leave you there. Um, yeah. Oh, you know, oh, I've got to prepare for a few notes for this thing. So I'll catch you later. Um, I do try to stop people if they are starting to overshare, because, again, small talk is small talk. I don't need your life story. I was just being polite. So we're going to move on from this conversation. But, yeah, I definitely feel myself kind of holding back a little bit at work unless I meet somebody who I really connect with. But, again, we don't really get too serious. It is work after all. So I've got things to do. And I just wanted to have a quick chat and uh, get back to work, really. Now, I do want to ask, Mark, is there something you really shouldn't talk about? Um, and I can think of one topic in particular that some students overshare and it might make people feel a little bit uncomfortable. Mm, yes, uh, a topic I wouldn't use as small talk is <clears throat> about your health or how mm. you're feeling. If you were sick and you took a few days off work, when you come back to work, your colleagues will probably ask, oh, are you feeling better? Are you okay? Just say, yeah, better now. That's it. You don't have to share any more details about your health. Health in English culture is very personal and sometimes very private. Sometimes people feel very sensitive or vulnerable about sharing health problems. So if you do get sick and someone asks, just answer in one line or one sentence. Don't give all the grisly details like, oh, I was bleeding from here or, oh, I was, my bed was horrible. I went to the hospital and the doctor did this and that. Those details are not professional. That's oversharing. And, that's, that's, and it's not polite That's to a ask. really good point. If you told me you went to the hospital and this is not as big of a deal in some places, I know some oh. students go to the hospital to visit their doctor as a doctor's appointment just for a general checkup. The moment you say the word hospital, I think right. that that's a very serious oh. condition, a very serious problem. Now, mm. I have to stop myself from asking you more questions because I know that that's very personal and it's none of my business. Again, that privacy wall, I will not be asking you, why did you go to the hospital? Mm. Well, yeah, it's none of your business. Is yeah, yeah, that's rude. Uh, I would say, I hope everything's okay. Yes. I hope everything's okay. Because that wall with health, I know some cultures are very open. Um, I had a couple of Russian students who were very open about their health with me and the health of their mother and the health of their father. And I appreciate that as a cultural difference. But at work, I would feel that that was inappropriate. And if I asked Mark, Oh, why were you in the hospital? You would say, well, that's a bit, that's a very uh, forward and direct question. We just don't hmm. ask those kinds of questions. And it, like Mark said, it makes us feel very vulnerable. Um, health is very private. You might not know for years that someone has a terrible health condition because they would never share that at work. That is something to, they talk about with their family and their close friends only. Yes, other topics to avoid generally relationships. If you're having mm. an argument with your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or girlfriend, don't bring that to the office. People don't want to hear that. And the other one would be news and politics. Again, small talk is casual talk that can't start an argument. News and politics is the easiest way to get into an argument with your colleague. So, yeah, you don't want to cause any friction with these conversations. So, some people just avoid the news completely, just in case their colleague has a, an opposing idea and then suddenly there's a strange feeling or it affects the relationship between you. So play it safe and just avoid that as well. So yes, oh. please tell us. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, please tell us what it's like in your country. What kinds of things will you talk about with your colleagues? Is it okay to talk about your health, for example? Is it okay to talk about relationships and family? Do you share a lot with your colleagues? Please let us know because we know it's different all over the world and it's, it's genuinely really interesting to read about. So there you go. A casual, high-level English chat about colleagues and coworkers. Now, what about you? Where are you from and how do you treat your colleagues and coworkers? 
How do you feel about making small talk with your coworkers and your colleagues? We read and reply to every single comment we get on all of our YouTube videos, and we love hearing your stories and experiences from all your different backgrounds and cultures. So let us know what it's like in your country. Is it very similar to how we described in the U.S. and the U.K., or is it quite different? Let us know. Yes. Uh, also, don't forget, if you are a High Level Listening member, then you can get the transcript of this episode and every other episode as a downloadable PDF. So you can see everything we said, all the examples. You can take it offline and you can study at your own pace. So thank you so much for joining us for our English chat. We hope to see you again for another class here on High Level Listening. See you next time. Bye-bye.